Hello, and welcome to Where's Babs? This is Barbara Talisman. Quick intro to my conversation with Reed Shank, a fellow solo traveler I met on the Majestic Princess as we sailed from Sydney to LA over the course of 28 days. We talk about why solo traveling on a cruise ship can not only be fun and a great way to meet people, but less expensive than you think. Give me grace on the editing, and I hope you enjoy the podcast. Thanks for listening, as always. Hi, Reed. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. So, so you and I have had some discussions about being a solo traveler. So, what's your how, what's your take on it? And you've been do you've been traveling on your own, or or traveling more full time for how long? Um, basically, almost two years. Year and a half, and uh, saw this commercial that came on for Princess Cruises, and I'd done one before, so I said. I'm going to check it out. And and it was a bargain. It was just coming back from COVID. And so they were very cheap. And I took a uh, seven-day Mexican Riviera cruise and ended up doing six last year. (laughs) That's funny because that was my first cruise, but it was on Carnival. And it was the same Mexican, seven days up and down the Mexican Riviera. That's funny. That that was both of our first cruises. I enjoyed traveling anyway. And I I used to do it for uh, for business concerns many years ago. And so I got a chance to see most of the United States and and some parts of Canada and things like that. And of course, I did a few trips to the Bahamas and trips to Mexico and that so kind like of thing. So like the typical vacation yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then kind of I got, I got bitten by the cruise bug and it was just so convenient. I live in Southern California, so it's easy to jump on a ship and go to Mexico. There's probably, I mean, between San Francisco and Long Beach, probably like five ports mm-hmm. that you can pull on yeah. from so- Southern California in case people are wondering. You know, so you don't have to only go to Miami. No, no, You don't no, have no, to no, only no. be on the East Coast, but on the West Coast, I think you actually have more choices oh, of where to go, including the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, although you know. it does get a little boring because then you end up, after f- four or five cruises, it's like, we're, I have to go someplace different, right? So, yeah. Um, but one of the things that attracted me to cruising is because it's very conducive to meeting other people and other like-minded people that like to travel and have been places. And um, uh, it's just a very, very fluid environment where there's a lot of opportunities to meet people. And there are people that I have met and now have relationships with that I continue to travel with and we plan cruises together. And there are people I met aboard ship. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that like-mindedness is what it's all about. And when you meet people in an environment that we all want to be in, Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, but this one happens to be you're kind of captivated on this particular cruise yeah. for 28 days. So you're really together for a long time as opposed to a seven-day cruise, mm-hmm. which you also make friends on for sure. Yeah. But I think um, because of the like-mindedness, people are willing to share Facebook and share names and texts and phone numbers and say, yes, let's stay in touch. Yeah. To- also, uh, when in a resort type of environment, yeah. it's not as conducive to having meals together and that kind of thing. Right. So I ended up going to Thailand for a week and then Bali two weeks and then I spent a week in Sydney before getting on this ship. Um, so I spent those times in, in resorts or in hotels and situations like that, just kind of traveling around and doing the things. So you meet people on tours and that kind of thing, and you meet people at the hotel pool and you go to dinner and that, but it's not quite as much as you find on board ship. And they can also be with family, either little kids or, or yeah. an entire generational family. Yeah, absolutely. And you're, you're, you're sticking out kind of a little bit because they come together as a family to sort of have this family vacation or honeymoon or yeah. whatever. So it's funny because when we started this, um, I don't. We met at the solo table. So on uh, any cruise you're on, there's a roll call that happens on Cruise Critic or on Facebook for your cruise ship and your date. And so I had started this little solo thing. Who's solo? There are a fair number of solo travelers on this cruise ship. And did you find that on your other cruises, like the long one to Tokyo? Yeah, I, I'm not as active on, okay. the, on the cruise credit yeah. or, or the Facebook thing. Yeah. I kind of find out about them after the fact yeah. and then get involved with them. But I always typically go to the um, solo and singles meetup. I think as a solo traveler on a cruise ship, all the things that you said, but there are also opportunities to meet people. So you oh, don't yeah, have absolutely. to just go sit in the cafe by yourself. No, no, you no. Know, I, we, I put together a solo dinner table you know, for us to start off, and people could come and go do whatever they wanted. Um, and then there's that solo meetup that you discussed, and I just think that that just kicks it off, and you meet at least other solo travelers, yeah. and you see more. And I think yeah. people kind of find their own little groups, yeah. and, and they do. 
Uh, and I certainly that's been the case for me. Yep, I agree. Um, and it's usually I end up with about a half a dozen people, yeah. and we'll do excursions together and yeah. have dinner and yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. And uh, and then, then as I said, there's people that that I continue to keep in contact with right. afterwards. Yeah. And we got to back this up because I'm traveling full time and you're traveling. I mean, full time mostly. Yeah. So, um, what led you to do that? You know, I mean, what were you doing just prior? And then what said, okay, well, you know, I'm just, besides the fact that you love traveling, I get that. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, I have a, I have my own company, first okay. of all. Right? Okay. I have a mortgage brokerage and realty. Okay. Um, I spent a number of years in wholesale. Um, most of my career has been in, in, uh, in marketing, sales and marketing. Um, and then I have a degree in economics, so I kind of got into, into uh, the loan business. And, um, so you're I, not you're not retired. That business is still going. It's still going. Yes, but I don't do it a whole lot. Right, and, right. You've got people that, that do it. Whatever. Do it. Because when you said people are joining you, that's great, and I think it's fine. But there aren't always a lot of people, single or otherwise, that have decided to go on the road full time. Oh, I absolutely. mean, you meet them sort of, but lining up schedules like you have with friends means that you've also met other friends, either friends or new friends, who have the ability uh -huh. to just stay on board. And we've met a lot of them on this ship. I mean, yeah. this was a 28 day just from Sydney to LA. And I think the whole thing up to Vancouver is almost 35 yeah, or it'll be 40, 40 days, days for me, 40 yeah. days. So you gotta find people. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's great, but you gotta find people. And you do find them on cruise ships that have also agreed, you know, I'm just gonna be on the road full time and where I go and how I go. Yeah, let's just do yeah. it together. And, right. and there are some that are, are very fortunate that they have the resources that they can own right. multiple homes and they yes. can do this full time. Right. I'm not one of those individuals. <laughs> 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 I like to say to people, you know, I, I did better than most, but not as well yeah. as right. me. Yes. Right? And you um, and I, you and I, we can talk about this another time as well, but we both decided to take our social security at 62. Oh, 63, yeah. Oh, 60, well, 63. mine was 62, 63, yeah, I mean a yeah. year, but it's still early relative to what the social security administration yeah. might give you yeah. later yeah. on. Well, I'm not a financial advisor, but I, I, know. I did the math and it didn't make any sense. Right, and I am not one it. either. Um, but the other thing that you mentioned was about um, how you crew, how you picked up this next cruise or this last cruise of, from Tokyo to this one on a future cruise credit opportunity. Oh yeah. So this is um, one of the themes that we have is traveling well for less or for free, depending on what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that when you get on a cruise, they'll actually give you a better deal or a future cruise credit if you either put a deposit down or check or select another yeah. cruise yeah. before you get off the current cruise. Yeah, first of all, the first cruise that I took was the San Diego to Tokyo cruise. Right. And, that's and how many days was that? That was 25. Okay, 25 but days. that's what's called a repositioning cruise. Right, and, and that's what this one is as well. As well, right. Yeah. So what happens is cruise lines are taking boats from certain areas of the world and repositioning to others because that boat's going to... Yeah, it's a seasonal thing and they're addressing that market, right? Exactly. Um, and uh, so as a result, it's a very economically priced cruise to begin with. Right. And then when I got on board, I said, well, guess what? If, you, if you're booking a cruise while you're on a cruise and you sail by May 15th, right. we'll give it to you half off. Right. Right? So I ended up doing this 27-day cruise. I got a balcony. I could have got it, got it for less money. Right. But I, got, I paid a little over $1,800 for a $2,700 cruise for a balcony. Ended up getting a mini suite once I got on board right. because they upgraded me for free. Right. And so if you, in, when you do math on stuff like that, 28, 18, 1700 or whatever, and it could have been cheaper if you took an interior, yeah. divided into 28 days, I can't do the math that fast, you probably can. It's like $60 a $60 day. $60 a day. So when we're talking about traveling well for less or for free, you know, you and I both look at these deals and I look at it on a daily rate or a monthly rate and go, well, this is cheaper actually than having an apartment. Yeah, I'm convinced so. that you can travel internationally for less money than it costs you to live in, in the United States. On a cruise, yeah. on a cruise, without question. Yeah. Well, I think this has been a great conversation. We're going to continue it on, on a couple of other topics, but it's been great meeting you on the cruise and it's thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah,